Piccadilly Circus in the 1950s, the very definition of urban nightlife, oozing with atmosphere. Fast forward half a century or so and the area is still defined by its illuminated advertisements, but there's one big difference. Most of today's signs are LEDs or plasma screens, unlike the 50s when they were all neon. Changing advertising trends have seen its popularity fall and its neon makers in Leeds who are feeling the decline more than most. The city is home to some of the country's finest craftsmen because it was where neon was first made outside of London. And it was Chris Timmerman's dad who brought neon production to Leeds in the 1930s. He wrote a letter to uh, James Oldham, Jimmy Oldham, um, who was the founder of Oldham Signs, uh, asking if he would like him to uh, come and work in Leeds uh, and, and bring neon up to the north of England. Chris went on to work at Oldham Signs with his dad and brother, but when the factory closed more than a decade ago, he decided to set up his own business from this tiny shop in Garforth. It's now internationally renowned. something very romantic about neon. It's just such a simple uh, way of making light. You, you, you've got glass, which is basically just sand. Two electrodes are attached to either end, and um, it, the, you know, the glass is filled with gas, and electric passes through it. It is handmade. It has an enormous personal touch, and it is very difficult to make. So that altogether gives it an, a quality, a certain presence that LEDs can't ever provide because they're a solid state electronic device. Although Neon may win the hearts of the romantics, the advertisers want the cheaper LEDs. Nevertheless, the team here believe there's still a place for Neon, even if it's in conceptual art rather than signage.